What's up everybody? I hope you're all having a great day today. So today I thought I would share with you guys real quick how I clean specs. Let's dive in, shall we? So before we get started here, I'm gonna show you the two knives that I use on a regular basis. These are the only two knives that I ever use to clean fish. And this doesn't go for only specs, I'm talking trout, redfish, I mean anything, bluegill, bass, you name it. So, here we have my regular Rapala fillet knife. And uh, this thing I've had for probably close to 15 years. Uh, I just keep it sharp, and this thing works just as good as the day I bought it. And this is the Rapala Ion. Now, this electric fillet knife, uh, this is probably the fifth electric knife that I've purchased um, before I found the one that was most comfortable for me. So, how I do this is I'm going to start a cut behind the pectoral fin and kind of come up behind the gills up to the top side of the fish. And just keep in mind, you always want to have the back of the fish facing you. Because again, I feel like that gives me the best leverage with the fish and um, the best cut. So, you take your knife, come up behind, like I said, behind that pectoral fin and uh, just behind the gill. Just make that initial cut down. Right there, just like, you, just like that. So once I get in just a little bit, you're gonna angle that knife to the back of the fish and you're gonna kinda make a side cut and just keep in mind, you wanna stay, when you make that cut, you wanna stay on the top side of that dorsal fin. You don't wanna go underneath the dorsal fin because that's gonna make doing the opposite side of the fish very difficult, if not impossible. So, I've already got my initial cut, so here I'm gonna go and turn the knife. I'm staying on top of that dorsal. Got a little bit of row in there too. So I'm gonna flip it over and do it on the opposite side. So again, underneath the pectoral fin, on the back side of the gills. Cut it down like that. You don't want to go all the way through the fish. So now I'm gonna turn that knife and angle it towards the back of the fish and stay on top of the dorsal fin on this side. And now, so I'm going to stop here because a technique that my uh, dad really likes to do is keep the, the whole fillet attached to the fish like this and just flap it over. And you can kind of just press it down to get it even. And then this way you have a little more leverage with the fish because it's attached to the fillet still. So here we go. And again, it's a little bit easier to do this at the edge of the board. minimal waste that fish is filleted out so with the first method we still have the skin attached so what we're gonna do is we'll take our regular knife here and just start a small cut you just take your fingers and kind of hold the edge of it down and come in at an angle and then kind of flatten your knife out and just cut until you get that fillet out and then you just have the skin get rid of that and then so now you just have the guts the rib cage and the fillets here and then so what I'm gonna do here if you can see uh, so this is the rib cage and all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along the top side of that rib cage so we can just cut all that out with the guts and everything in the row and then it's gonna leave us with the fillet part and this, this part's really easy. You're just cutting on top of the rib cage. This doesn't take any real technique or skill. If you've ever like deboned a chicken or anything like that, it's kind of similar. You're just cutting out the, the bony part and then you're left with just the filet. And we'll do the same thing on this one. Go. 
there's the rib cage we're going to toss that and one thing about panfish in general is when you fillet them out like this there's always this top little top little part of the fillet and as you can see it kind of pulls off but it's one long strip at the top you want to kind of get rid of that it, I mean you probably could eat it but it comes off very easily but it's almost on every one that you fillet out so we usually just make sure we take that little sliver of whatever it is backstrap meat or I don't even know but it doesn't look too appetizing to me so and then you're just left with that fillet again back of the fish facing us come underneath the pectoral fin and come up to the top of the head but staying on the top side of the dorsal fin make our initial cut not going too deep and honestly it's kind of hard to go too deep because you have those rib bones there and it's pretty tough so once you have your initial cut down and you're in there with your knife you're going to angle the knife towards the back of the fish and stay on top of the dorsal fin and then so you'll see me I kind of go over the fish and grip the lip and that's so I can kind of pull while I'm cutting the opposite direction so it gives me a little extra leverage flip it over all right so I'm keeping it connected this is the method I tend to use most sometimes I get especially when I'm doing large numbers of fish I'll kind of buzz through them and sometimes I go all the way through on accident and that's it's not like it's hard to you know do it um, with the fillet cut out um, so once you have it flapped over you're just going to cut in a little bit at an angle and then kind of angle your knife just like that so we're going to flip the fish over do the same exact thing back facing us under the pectoral fin We made that initial cut now we're just going to angle the knife to the back of the fish and use the lip for leverage if you need to flip it over all right make our initial cut right there and kind of just angle the knife I want to say down because it is angling it down and that sounds counterproductive because it sounds like you're going to cut through the skin but the skin of these specks honestly they're pretty tough um, as opposed to like bluegill um, they're they're very scaly so I'm going to come in and just kind of angle it down and I can pull that fillet back too as you can see and then you know there's virtually no skin there all right, so I strapped on the chesty here. Uh, that way you guys can kind of get a partial fat gut shot, as well as maybe a better shot of me doing this instead of the overhead view. So here we go again. We're going to come underneath this pectoral fin and just along the top, right behind the gill, to make that initial cut. Nothing to it. Now we're going to angle the neck towards the back of the fish and come right on top of this dorsal fin. You don't want to go underneath it. There you go. So we're gonna flip it over, kind of mash that part down there. And now we're gonna come into this and kind of curve the knife just a bit so it's angled down, not like straight down, but just at an angle. There you have it. So flipping it back over, same thing on this side, underneath the pectoral, behind the gills, make that initial cut, turn your knife. And you can kind of jiggle the knife, like if you feel that it's getting hung up on the bones or anything like that, just kind of give it a little bit of a, a jiggle on the blade and it'll kind of skirt on top of those bones. Now they got it flipped over, I'm just going to kind of come in at an angle, angle it down. 
here we go we have that little top piece we can kind of pull off and we're just gonna use our regular knife and skirt these rib bones and as you can see there's like a little chunk of meat underneath the rib here and we try to salvage as much as that as possible so that's what you're left with there and it looks pretty gross because you know there's a lot of uh, tannins in the river that make these fish so black and as you can see it's all over the cutting board and you know all over the fillets but you know we're gonna rinse all these off and they'll be just fine so don't let that deter you so we're gonna kind of pull that little top piece of meat off there and we're gonna just skirt the top of them ribs and salvage that little piece there throw away the ribs and there's the fillet Look at this freaking jambalaya. Mamotho. All right. So again, behind pectoral, behind the gills, just kind of making an angled cut. There we go. And now we're going to turn the blade. Come on top of those dorsal things. Just like that just flip it over and you can tell when you've done a good job because if you don't you'll see huge like flaps of meat you know if you're kind of especially if you're using it with a regular knife you're probably going to have a little more waste especially if you're just learning um but as you can see here it's just it's perfect i mean this is just bone right here so all right so we got it flipped over come down angle that knife down when you make that cut you get a little closer to me Flip the fish over, back facing you. And I usually kind of grip them under the gill here. They're dead, so they don't care. Come down, make that initial cut. Come along the back. You can see like right now, I'm jiggling that knife up and down to just skirt those bones. And then come in at an angle. Kind of angle it down along that skin. There you have it. And they are slimy fish, so don't be surprised at the amount of slime that's left in your cooler and on your cutting board. All right. So one thing you really need to keep in mind is, especially if you've never cleaned fish before and you're kind of just getting into it, um, you know, you don't need a fancy electric fillet knife. You can certainly do it with a regular one. That's how I started out. That's how most people start out. Um, but you have to be patient. Again, if you've never done it before, you can't just pick up a knife and start ripping through fish because, well, for one, you're going to butcher them. And honestly, you're going to butcher fish regardless if you've, ne if you've never cleaned them before. So, you know, you really have to be patient with yourself and go step by step. And you can't beat yourself up when you butcher fish because everyone does it. It's part of the learning process. We'll do the Mac Daddy that we caught in the river the other day. My buddy Jared actually landed this one. But just look at that freaking fish. Massive slam bony. All right. So, coming behind the pectoral. Make the initial cut. And the gill. Gonna move this knife up here because it clearly wants to jump off the board every time. And turn the knife. And jiggling that blade. This is a little bit bigger fish, so it's gonna be a little tougher. Flap it over. And come in and angle that knife down. comes right through good gracious this thing's a monster these are the kind of fish that are in our river with the coochie river you don't get them all the time but when you do 
What a freaking treat. Right. Coming in. Grip the lip if you have to. And just skirt the top of that dorsal fin. Alright. Coming in at an angle. Got knife facing down quite a bit. That's all there is to it. Cut that rib out. So we've only got a few left to do here, but I'm just gonna burn through them and you guys can kind of get the pattern at this point of what I'm doing. Gripping the lip. Because this is, again, the bigger fish, I definitely, it's easier for me to grip that lip. Scoot down. Come in at an angle. Facing down. Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, like if you're trying to flay these fish in the middle of a cutting board, it's going to be so much more difficult for you to do that. Always bring the fish to the edge because you're going to get a lot more leverage on the fish, a better grip, and just a better cut in general. And you can see all these scales flipping off. That's what I mean. You're going to get scales on the fillet, so just make sure you wash them really good. Just biting into a a nice fried speck fillet with scales on it. It almost feels like you're biting down on a bone. They're very unpleasant to eat. All right, take a regular knife, cut around the ribs. And you can kind of go as close as you feel comfortable. I don't get too close because then every once in a while you'll get a little bone that sneaks in there. So a little smaller one here. But the technique stays the same. Cut in, turn it to the back. Flip it over. Angle that knife down and cut out the fillet. And you guys want to see how ghetto my setup is here. <laughs> this is how I, I fillet my fish at this house we're at. Uh, I don't have a fancy cutting board on the water or nothing. I use one of our trash cans with a cutting board on top. Cut in. Turn that knife. And another thing to kind of keep in mind on the belly side, it's easy to kind of make the mistake of going in underneath the anal fin. And that will also kind of screw up your cut. You want to stay on both the, the top dorsal fin and the anal fin. You want to stay on the top side when you're making the cut. So don't get overzealous with your cuts. Try not to, rather. All right. on that blade a little bit. Sometimes it just has to be done that way. And come in and angle it down. These fish really are probably the easiest fish to clean, in my opinion. I mean, we get heavy into the bluegills come uh, bluegill season, and those things I think are so much more difficult to clean only because they're so much more bony. Like, I mean, you will freaking wear a blade on them things. Um, but a good way of eating bluegill is to just cut the heads off and pull the guts out and fry them whole. Those are pretty tasty. But uh, my preferred way of eating fish is just fried fillets. Just gonna go ahead and wash these off and uh, make sure all the scales and schmeg are off them and get them dried off and get them vacuum sealed. 
All right, so hopefully that technique kind of helps some of you out. Uh, maybe those who have never cleaned fish before or just kind of getting into it. Um, again, this is just the technique that works for me. And uh, as you can see, it, it definitely works. And you don't have to have an electric fillet knife to, to clean these fish. You can just do that whole process with a regular fillet knife. Um, it's just gonna take you a little bit longer, but if you do plan on really getting into fishing, I can't advocate enough for an electric fillet knife. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. And I mean, like this Rapala Ion here, this freaking thing, I mean, when I was down at my dad's in Okeechobee, which if you guys haven't watched those videos, make sure you jump on the channel and check those out. I got one at Harney Pond and one that's actually on Big Lake Okeechobee. Uh, we use these knives and I went through se uh, almost 70 fish off one battery. And these things just pop out. There's a little button here that pops the battery out. The kit comes with two, um, with the knife and a couple size blades. But I went through about 70 fish off one battery. And granted that battery, as I was burning through that last fish, it was like, uh, uh, it was struggling, but it still made it through and I made the cut. So these knives are super impressive. I think they're relatively quiet. Um, I think the only kind of negative is once you really start getting into the fish, they do get a little bit warm, um, but they're not gonna like burn your hand or anything. They're just, you know, that's the nature of the beast with electric knives. So look at that view. Isn't that pretty? This is our backyard. Um, if you guys aren't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. That definitely will help me out. And uh, I appreciate everyone that's been enjoying the content. I know this uh, style of fishing, you know, really isn't for everyone. Maybe it's boring to some, but I tell you, this is the stuff I live for. Spec fishing, bluegill fishing. It's just the greatest freaking thing. And it, you know, anyone that's also into it as much as I am, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, there's nothing better, man. It's, it's just so fun. So uh, definitely more spec fishing content coming. And uh, some other things, again, I don't wanna spoil anything, but uh, some pretty cool stuff coming up. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. So again, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.